One of the greatest embodiments in my family history is tapa cloths and woven mats, also known as ngatu and fala in my native tongue. No religious and or sacred ceremony is completed without these treasured items. Growing up, I remember my mother carefully unfolding each ngatu and woven mat as she calculated in her head the pieces that she would use for each event and the pieces that would go back into the storage. She was so meticulous when it came to the preservation of these cultural items. My older sisters would drag their feet into the garage, dreading the hours they would have to spend with my mother reorganizing and stacking mats. I was the youngest of the girls, so I never bared the same responsibility, nor did I fully comprehend the significance of this practice. It wasn't until the week of my wedding when I was summoned to help my mother and her sisters prepare a commodity of tapa cloths and woven mats for my reception that I fully understood the significance of it all. Walking into the gym of my church, I was overwhelmed by the amount of cultural pieces my family had put together on my behalf. Tears filled my eyes as I watched everyone tirelessly work together into the wee hours of the night, making sure that everything was perfect for my big day. A year later, I gave birth to my first son, Stephen Afotitaimi, and again, I was presented with gifts of beautiful fine mats and tapa cloths. The making and giving of tapa cloths and woven mats are not only a part of ancient Tongan history, but it is also a part of my own family history because it is a gift that is given at birth, in marriage, and at death. The day on my father's funeral, my aunt waited hours for me to put my ta'ovala on. I was hesitant because I knew that the mat she was waiting to put on me signified that my father had passed away. This was the ta'ovala that I never wanted to wear. This is the one that I dreaded the most. I took deep breaths as my aunt wrapped my body with a huge floor mat. It was a surreal experience for me. It was at that moment that I realized my father was no longer living. As my aunt fastened the rope around my waist to keep the mat from falling, I felt my lungs tighten up as well. I couldn't breathe, I thought to myself. It was as if I had forgotten how to do the easiest and most natural thing. I had to remind myself over and over again to breathe as I made my way into the church to say goodbye to my father. I couldn't escape it. I was tucked into the floor mat, sitting in the front of the church, gazing into the distance, reminding myself, just breathe. Remember to breathe.